Tom Fidzi here with my random video review of Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode two. This one was so much better than the first episode. The first episode wasn't really that sure. And then I was like, I don't know what it is about this episode. And then I kind of realized afterwards that Falcon and the Winter Soldier never actually met. But in this episode, they do meet from the start, they're together and we get that classic Falcon and Winter Soldier, Falcon and Bucky banter uh, that we like so much, or at least I like so much in Civil War. Uh, so it was great to see that, them talking about their friend, Cap, who has been lost. And there's that tension about the fact that uh, Falcon gave up the shield and it was just really enjoyable. You know, you could tell that, there, you know, there, there is some respect there between each other because their mutual friend, Cap, both respect both of them. But at the same time, you know, they just can't get along because they have slightly different ideals and it all comes down uh, to the shield. But it's great to see them actually getting along. I did feel like at the beginning, though, that uh, Bucky Winter Soldier, the White Wolf, even though, you know, he's a heavily trained military person, done stealth operations all his life. But when they were on that mission, he was very like, I'm just going to go and I'm just going to take him out. Maybe it was because he was frustrated. He was trying to prove a point. Maybe his head wasn't quite in the right place there, probably definitely why he needs to see that shrink. But yeah, I just thought it was a little bit strange that he is like the stealth assassin guy, the guy who went in there to get jobs done. And he was the one who was being very, very, uh, like, you know, like put, putting them at risk. He was the one being very uh, uncautious uh, and could have ruined the mission if he had stepped out. But, you know, Falcon was the one who was being a little bit more smart. Uh, you know, maybe that is why Cap... Uh, clues there as to why Cap wanted uh, Falcon to have the shield uh, because you know he, he can stay a little bit cool a little bit more level-headed in the situation Bucky he's a he's an emotional mess uh, at the moment but he's still a very cool guy um, and the MCU is the MCU is weird because we get in this the new Captain America and we see him and he's on stage and he's being interviewed like he's a celebrity and it's just weird that you have Falcon Known Avenger who helped fight Thanos and save the world to undo the blip as well as countless other things. And he's not portrayed in the same way. If this was the real world, Falcon, regardless of whether or not he wants to be one, would be famous, well-known magazine covers. There would be paparazzi following him around. His wings will be decorated with sponsorships. He will have Red Bull gives you wings, wings, and that's not happening here. He's just a regular guy, living a regular life last week, you know. He was struggling to get a bank loan, and he's just having to put up with real-world problems. He's not immune to it. Again, this episode, we see it. Falcon with the police, very powerful scene. I'm glad that they actually put that in, because that, that was a really good moment. And, uh, you know, probably as well, getting into a little bit as to why Falcon maybe doesn't want to carry that shield, you know, because there are a lot of eyes on him, there are prejudices, maybe that's all building up in him. And it was great as well to go back and see the original Captain America. Now, I didn't actually know about this character until it was brought up in, I think it was uh, Mr. Sunday Movies, brought it up, and I'm so glad that they brought it up here. I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't get to see much of him, you know, like he was just in that one scene we see Falcon flare up, he's angry, and then, unfortunately, the police turned up and ruined it. But uh, I really wanted to get more into that and find out a little bit more about it. Hopefully we will as the series goes on. Or maybe we can come back to it if we ever get flashbacks in that period. It would be really cool to see. But I'm really glad that they actually did that. Because, uh, yeah, it, 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 once again, it allows us to look back at the MCU in the past. And, you know, we kind of got this in... Uh, WandaVision as well with the witches that, you know, witches have always been a thing. Magic has always been a thing, but we just didn't know about it. We, you know, when we're watching these films, we think that there were no superheroes until Iron Man uh, made the Iron Man suit. Then we find out that, oh, Captain America was around, you know, in, in uh, the Second World War. And you're like, OK, but then there was nobody else. And then now four arrived and then Hulk was created, you know, and, and so on and so on and so on. But so it's great to always go back and find out that, no, this stuff has been going on forever. We just, as the audience, didn't know about it. And it was a lot more secretive in the world of the MCU. Now it's a lot more public. You know, it has to be public. There are alien spaceships flying around. 
uh, and that everybody knows about the big three uh, was it aliens, cyborgs and wizards. Um, so yeah, it's really good to go back and uh, actually find that out. I would really love to go back and see that and I hope uh, they revisit that as well. Um, and we get to hear more Falcon's views and it. Maybe Falcon will go back and speak to him at the end of the series or something like that. That would be really, really cool. Um, maybe go to him for like advice or something. That'd be really cool. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to learn more about that character's backstory. Uh, and then what else, what else we got to talk about? So let's talk about the new Captain America. So the new Captain America, I was convinced it's going to be a villain. Then all of a sudden this week, there's a twist and he's helping out Bucky and Falcon. Uh, I think in none of the trailers we saw him fighting on the roof of those trucks. That was a genuine surprise in that scene. So when he turned up, I was like, wow, okay, we're really doing this. He's really going to join their sides. I was convinced he was going to get killed in that like first mission gets killed. Uh, didn't deserve the shield, but no, he, uh, he survived. He, he made it through. He didn't complete the mission, but he was still going and he's still on the hunt of them as well. And I'm still convinced that he's going to be a villain. Because, you know, at the end he gave that little warning message, you know. Even though he's a nice guy and you can tell that he just wants to do the job. He's still... You can also tell that maybe he's still going to be a little bit frustrated. Because, as Falcon says, you know, he has to do things by the book. Um, he can't... You know, and he, he's getting the stigma as well of should he have the shield. Um, so, yeah, it was really interesting with that. I am still convinced that maybe he's going to become a villain. Or at least, like, not like a full villain. But maybe just an antagonist, someone who gets in the way. We know that Falcon ends up with the shield, though, because we've seen it in the trailers. Unless the trailers were lying to us again. Um, so I wish they didn't have those scenes in the trailers. Because now I'm constantly like, well, this guy's obviously got to get out of the way to get that shield and for Falcon to get it. Um, but I am i don't know at all how it's going to get to that point. So maybe in the next episode on the next mission, he's going to get killed or something. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, it seems it seems strange. I, I think that he is going to be a little bit more antagonistic the next few times that we see him, which will be really cool, um, as opposed to working together. But I did like the fact that he was working together and that they had did have that kind of common ground as well. They both just want to do the right things. Um, you know, he, he still... He looks up to Cap as much as them. You could kind of see when Bucky was watching on the TV and he brought it up that, you know... Bucky was annoyed, but when he was like, I looked up to Cap, I really like what he stood for. You can see that Bucky was a little bit, like a little bit more of a smirk. He was a little bit more comfortable with that. Uh, but that's interesting. We're going to Zemo. A, uh, we knew he was going to be in him. He's going to be working with the good guys. It's always fun when a villain has to work with uh, the bad guys. So that's going to be very, very interesting. Is he going to turn? And then we have the flag smashes as well. Find that, uh, yes, they've all got superpowers. And this is where now I'm like, well, oh, maybe this show isn't as predictable as I was thinking it was going to be because I have no idea where it's going to go. Like, we've got the fake Captain America who's a lot more involved in it and seemingly a good guy. And then we have the Flag Smashers and they've got something going on. They've got people after them. You know, we saw the text message that one of them got was like, I'm going to, I'm coming for you. I'm going to kill you. And we're kind of getting a little bit more sympathy for them as well. So are they not the big bad? Is there somebody else who is going after them? Uh, so yeah, I, there could be some big twists and mysteries. I'm trying not to get too uh, too much in the theory mode. You know, oh, oh, here we, maybe it was Mephisto who sent those texts uh, to her to say, I'm going to come and get you. Uh, I don't I doubt it, but <laughs> how funny would that be? Yeah, everyone was like, "Wonder Vision is going to be Mephisto." And then no, it was him. He was sending the texts all along. Uh, but yes, yeah, so is there another big bad in this as well? You know, are the Flag Smashers not going to be the big bad? Is there, are they going to end up becoming a more sympathetic group? That even though they have like quite bad ideals, you know, that they're, they're still kind of trying to do the right thing, kind of like Thanos. You could probably see their point of view. But, uh, hmm, interesting, yes. Don't know where it's going to go. Uh, and I think we've seen quite a lot of the action scenes from the trailers as well. Um, so, yeah, next few episodes could very much be a lot of mystery stuff. I'm going to get my head out of the theories so that I don't ruin it, so that I get more genuine surprises, like when uh, Fake Captain America came onto those lorries. Overall, the action was good. Rip 
red ring uh maybe you can get a new red ring that actually has like a character and a personality or maybe he can actually develop telepathic abilities actually speak to a hawk so i think i think it's telepathic abilities that he has in the comics he can like speak to hawks um in or at least one he can speak to one so maybe do that why not we're in the we're in the world now where the mcu can get a little bit weird uh, so yeah, do it. Do that. I'll be up for that. Although, of course, we know at the end he's probably going to become Captain America. I didn't know that the character that uh, Falcon is working with in the comics is actually another version of the Falcon. So that's really interesting. And I never actually thought that, you know, if Falcon becomes Captain America, there's not going to be a Falcon. But then, yeah, there can be a replacement Falcon on the Young Avengers there. Uh, that the current Falcon is uh, probably going to lead as the new Captain America. So uh, mm, I'm I'm excited by this episode. I really enjoyed it. The action was good. There was some dodgy green screenish on the when they were on the truck, but overall fun action, fun twists. Um, I do I really like the stuff getting into like the history and the lore of Captain America and the fact that Captain America, the original one, uh, wasn't the first Captain America. That was really good. Nice grounded stuff with the heroes. Even though it's weird in terms of the MCU. You know, like Bruce Banner got name dropped in this. And it's like, well, if Bruce Banner is so famous and well known, why don't you like see him more on like billboards? Like a uh, Bruce Banner uh, promotes Curiosity Stream. Uh, Hulk likes Raid Shadow Legends. You know, like if these are well known household names, it's just I still find it so strange that Falcon can't get a bank loan. Like, and he's struggling to live, um, even though he gets recognised and stuff on the street. It's so, like, against, like, our actual real world where these people would legitimately be icons and everywhere you look, real celebrities. Like, we saw, like, fake Captain America was signing action figures. Where's the Falcon action figure line? Why is he not getting any revenue from that? I know he said that he was all doing it for charity and stuff, you know. He was just doing it for the calls, you know, not for the fame, uh, which is very noble, but you'd still think that it gets some, like, publicity and stuff from it, or, you know, just by the fact that he's doing it, just by the fact that he's famous, just by the fact that he's a superhero and has robotic bird wings, you know. Um, so I'm just trying to get my head out of that weird kind of... That doesn't make sense, because it's all about the story, and the story is cool, and it, as I said, it makes our characters more grounded, uh, and you can kind of relate to them a lot more, and it also means, you know, that they can kind of, even though Falcon, he gets recognised and stuff, you know, as he said, he can he can go off the radar. He can, uh, you know, he, he doesn't have to report to anyone. So that's really cool. And once again, kind of showing that the Avengers are just no more, you know, if he can just do that with so much autonomy and that he's not even calling in these other people. Um, so, yeah, a lot, lot of questions still, but very good episode. Really enjoyed it, and I uh, generally can't wait to see Zemo again. I'm very excited for that. Can't wait for the purple mask.